Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw, Editorial Director at TigerFitness.com and Muscle and Bra Nutrition CEO. Guys, it's Q&A Saturday. I got a ton of questions today. Probably going to be a long video, probably clocking in at 30 minutes, so hang tight. Guys, before I get into the questions, if I answer your question in this video and you want a free copy of either of my books, Massive Iron or Massive Six, Massive Six is a beginner program, you can email me, there's a link below to an email. Send me an email, no questions asked, I'll send you one of my books. Now, if you guys want a question featured in a Q&A, just find my Q&A link below, come on over, post your question. I answer every question posted in that Q&A. The best questions, I turn into a video just like this. All right, guys, let's get into it. The first question today is from Dave FK. Dave underscore FK it says my question is regarding seated dumbbell shoulder presses one of my favorite movements how low am I to go I aim for the dumbbell handles to be in line with the top of my collarbone so he's bringing them right about there um, say I was doing 75s reps etc etc at that point my buddy yelled at me to continue and go below parallel with my go below parallel um, Meaning his, his uh, this area right here more than parallel compared to the floor. I managed another three reps in doing this. What's better for gains and shoulder health? Well, here's what I recommend with any type of overhead pressing movement. The further back you bring your elbows, the more strain you're going to put on your shoulders. Now, obviously, if you're just dropping this plane a little below parallel to the ground, it's probably not going to be a major issue. Now, considering the fact that you freaks, you power builders, are probably going to be lifting for a very long period of time, if you're like me, for a lifetime. I've been doing this for 30 years. So, with that said, I like to take my time, or excuse me, not take my time, I like to take caution and not lower that too much. So, when I'm doing seated, when I'm doing front barbell presses, I generally will bring the bar to about here because it doesn't feel like it strains the shoulder as much. Behind the neck presses, just about here to top of ear level. And in doing seated dumbbell presses, because you're not, you don't have your elbows back and your shoulders back as much, there's not as much strain on the shoulders. So because you're a little bit forward, you can drop it a little bit lower. I like to bring the handle maybe about mouth level. So that's about the lowest I'm gonna go. It's right about there, the handle about mouth level. Obviously, a lot of this is personal, but that's probably the lowest I would recommend going on a regular basis. So, Dave, I hope that question helped. I hope that answer to your question helped. Next question is from Grant. Grant said, regarding dumbbell exercises using the rep goal system, for the, those of you not familiar with the rep goal system, it's something I talk about in my book, Massive Iron, plug, 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 see it below. And look, I'm going to tell you guys something. When I plug my book, I want you guys to know that I'm not just trying to sell and I'm trying to help you guys. If you want a free copy of my book, I'll give it away. No questions asked. I get emails from you guys all the time saying, hey, can I have a copy of your book? And you know what? I give it away. No questions asked. That's just the way I roll. So if you want to buy my book, great. If you want a free copy, great. Anyway, the rep goal system, he says, do you think it would be ideal not to increase the weight until you exceed the rep goal by three to five reps? more than the rep goal since most dumbbells increase by an increment of five pounds. So Grant's question is, he's doing a dumbbell exercise using my rep goal system and he's wondering because of the five pound increase in dumbbells, which is 10 pounds overall, if he should go three to five reps over his rep goal. Yeah, you can adjust rep goals as needed. If you're doing three sets with a rep goal of 25 on any dumbbell exercise or 20 or 30 or whatever your rep goal is, you can just change the rep goal. You can change it to, if, it, if you're using 25, you can change it to 27, you can change it to 28. I usually set it up in five pound increments just because they're easier for us meatheads to remember. But you can adjust it. You can, you can bring that rep goal up to 28, 29. I want you to evolve your training based on needs. I want you to evolve your training to be exercise specific. So you can tweak those rep goals or tweak those reps uh, for every individual exercise until it feels best for you. That, folks, is how you carve, forge forward, and carve your own program. And I highly, highly recommend that. That's one of my pillars of success, training evolution. 
All right, guys, the next question is from Costin Adrian. Costin Adrian writes to the big, hairy, ugly dude. Steve, I always seem to be getting medical, or me, medical, I'm so crazy, medial knee pain in my left knee when squatting. I noticed that this started happening after I switched from low to high bar squats. Now, my numbers are pretty low, meaning 315, sub 315 for five reps. I can rep out 120 kilograms for like seven, eight, so I think I'm still a novice. No way, you are not a novice. Not a lot of guys get the 315 by five on squats. That's definitely early intermediate to intermediate or early intermediate uh, stage lifting. So I'm also flat footed in the bottom position. My knees seem to go in a bit. How can I fix this issue? Look, you're getting knee pain and your knees are coming in when you're squatting. I really need to see a video to see what's going on here. But a lot of guys when they're squatting, they kind of air break. They're very tentative and they start to squat and they brace themselves and their knees start to come in instead of naturally letting their knees open and flower. So I'm assuming um, that you are using not more of a conventional stance but a little wider stance. You need to send me a video, Costin, but the thing I want you to do is to um, watch your videos and try to see if your stance is too wide. You want your knees to track you want your knees to track along your foot position. You, If you're using a weight that you're being way too tentative, you're air braking yourself and you're allowing those knees to come in, you need to lower the weight a little bit. Start allowing those knees to naturally come out, naturally move out as you sink. So anyway, send me a video, cost, and I know this really didn't answer your question, but knee issues are serious business. You need to send me a video so I can check out your form and do it with a about 70% of your one rep max. You can post that in my Q&A. All right, guys, next question is from Ben C. Whoop, there he is, Ben C, Ben C. Ben C says, as a beginner looking to build muscle and strength, how much weight should I try to put on each week or month? Good question. Now, if you guys have not put on a quality amount of muscle mass, if you've only put on maybe three to five pounds, um, there's been a lot of research in this, and I've talked about this before, and you can't really go into all this research in a little video like this. But we do know from looking at multiple sources and multiple studies and extensive studies that a natural trainee can gain anywhere from 12 to 16 pounds of muscle mass during their first year of lifting if everything is perfect and it rarely is. Now each year thereafter that rate of gain diminishes by about half. So I tell people a generic stand, a generic standard, and this isn't to limit you, this is to present you with reasonable standards. 12 to 16 pounds a year, year one. Six to eight, year two. Three to four, year three. And after that, you're scratching for pounds and ounces. So if you're a true beginner, a true novice, with that in mind, you're looking at 12 to 16 pounds of muscle your first year. You want to probably gain no more than 33% of that. I would aim for um, maybe 18 to 24 pounds gain max at first year. Now that's going to be a pretty aggressive bulk. You can, you can tone that back a little bit and go for 16 to 20. That'll be more of a lean bulk. Even if you don't maximize your, your natural potential that first year gaining 16 to 20 pounds, you're still gonna, you're on the right track, you're gonna make great gains and you'll make that up year two. So with that in mind, just remember the curve goes like this, where the rate of gain starts high and then it decreases. So even though that first year, you're aiming for 16 to 20 pounds of weight increase, it's gonna be higher right out of the gate and lower at the end. So you can start out the first six months looking for two pounds of weight gain a month, and then the next six months as a beginner, maybe a 1.25 to one and a half pounds per month. So I hope that helped. Next question is for BA, not Baracus, Baracus something. The big hairy ugly dude doesn't know. Um, he says, hey Steve, my low bar back squats were good at some point, but over time I stopped squatting below parallel. I worked up to 350 by five. It's not parallel, so it doesn't count. How much weight do you lower your sets when you make adjustments to your form? 
Well, first off, the key thing here is that you understand what the form issues are. Without a proper understanding of the form issues, just lowering the weight, or without a proper understanding of the form issues and what triggered the development of the transition from parallel squats to high squats, without understanding what is going wrong, if you lower the weight and try to creep back up, you're probably going to fall into the same pit, the same pattern. So you need to have somebody, like the big hairy ugly dude, look at your squats and try to figure out what is going on. So, just like I told the previous question earlier, I want a video of your squats. Take a video with about 70% of your, you doing reps with 70% of your one rep max. Just rep out like you're normally repping out. I want to see this work. I want to see you do 300 pounds in a squat. I want to see what it looks like. I'll give you some form pointers and you can slowly work on those, work on those, maybe drop the weight back down to 225 and you can start to focus on only quality reps, only doing rep additions when your form is dead nuts because I talk about that a lot. You wanna only do quality reps. You wanna stop sets when your form goes to heck. So if you drop the weight back down to 225 and you're working on good form and you start to feel like, oh, that last rep was a little bit high, big hairy ugly dude, a little bit high, you stop the set. You only wanna progress when you're doing good quality reps. If you start to get sloppy at the end of sets, you're gonna to start to develop bad patterns. And before you know it, you're doing 350 by five and they're half reps and ain't nobody got time for that, kids. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I hope that helped. Um, next question, another one from Ben C. Ben C is a faithful listener, a follower of this channel and I appreciate his support. Ben said, opinions on sub-maximal training. Doing five by fives with an easy weight from, but moving the bar as fast as possible. Then adding weight next week. Look, here's the thing. There's a time and a place for speed work, but it's usually for only for the late intermediate to advanced power lifter. Pushing weights as quickly as possible. Look, you should always be applying force when you're lifting because if you're not applying force, you're not getting maximal stimulation. Now, force doesn't need to be speed, okay? Force, like all your sets should be maximum speed. When I have 400, 500 pounds on the bench press, I'm pushing with the maximum speed I can. You should always be pushing with, with, with that. I mean, you don't have to be doing crazy, you know, speed, but you want to focus on, you don't want to focus your, your, uh, your mind on performing fast reps. You want to focus your, you want to focus your sets, your reps on performing quality reps, staying in that form groove and just repping out, getting that quality progression. Don't try to do speed work. Don't lower the weight and try to do gimmicks like speed work. If you're gonna lower the weight at all, you could do something like rest pause work, which is very good for hypertrophy. It's okay to lower the weight if you're going to do something that's more intense, like drop sets or supersets or running the rack or rest pause training. But I don't wanna see anybody lower the weight and do speed work and just try to progress using speed work because it's gonna catch back up to you. You can't sustain that speed because the weight's gonna get heavier very quickly within two to three months and that speed that you felt on those bench presses or whatever lift is going to slow down as the weight gets more challenging and you're gonna be right back where you started. So don't spin your wheels doing this speed training um, where you're trying to progress because this type of speed work isn't the same as powerlifting speed work. Powerlifting speed work is always a percentage of your one rep max. It's very calculated, very structured. This type of progression in hopes of building muscle is going to catch up to you. The bar is going to slow. You're going to be right back where you started. So I really don't see any good, any reasonable reason to use this type of speed work to combine rep work and speed work and try to progress. So I hope that makes sense, Ben. Uh, next question is from Manny S. Manny S. Whoa. Hey, sorry about that technical difficulty. I just smacked my tower here, kids. I smacked my tower live on camera. Manny S. I hope that didn't make you motion sick. Manny S. said, Steve, quick question. Do you think the rep goal system could be used as a powerlifting routine? 
Um, I'm not looking to break any world records, but he just wants to get stronger. Yeah, look, everything I do is power building. I use the rep goal system right now on a lot of exercises. There is no difference between strength and muscle building for most of us, okay? If you want to be a competitive bodybuilder or competitive power lifter, after you've been lifting for three to four years and built a lot of muscle and strength, then you can kind of say, oh, my biceps cra are crappy, I need to work on that. Or oh, I have a, a hamstring weakness if you're in power lifting, I need to bring that strength up. But look, you don't need as a power lifter to train in low reps to train for strength. Um, a lot of the old school guys, they trained uh, like Bill Kazmaier. All of his stuff looked very bodybuilding-ish. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Franco Colombo and all these guys, Frank Zane, he used to do what they called the odd lifts. They got very strong just doing rep work. Rep work is your foundation. Rep work, regardless of your goals, bodybuilding or powerlifting, should be used to get you to that 90%, that 90% of your natural potential, strength and muscle mass. That's the foundation. Um, rep work is going to build muscle, which leads to more strength down the ro uh, road. And rep work is going, you can build strength during rep work. I built all, I built 95% of my strength on rep work. I didn't even touch, I didn't even touch low rep sets until 2008, 2009, when I just couldn't get my squat past 500 pounds, even after six months. So if you get to that point where your lifts are stalled and you're like, man, I wanna move my bench press from 275 to 315, then, and it, and it stalled for like four to six months, then it might be time to do lep, lower up sets. But rep work should be the bread and butter for all of you, no matter what you're doing. Even if you're a power lifter, you wanna take some time, eight to 10, 12 weeks off season, do some hypertrophy work, build up that muscle so then you can, you have, you're, you're ready, you're, you're healthy, you're going into your cruise where you can peak and smash some PRs. I hope that helped, uh, Manny. All right, guys, this might be my last question. We're cruising through these for the day. Uh, yep, last question for the day is from Recon Sunshine. Recon Sunshine, I almost bumped the damn camera again, kids. Um, long question, but the the the, uh, the, the uh, real question here from Recon Sunshine is: Do you think using a slingshot with extra weight um, added to the bar would be a good alternative instead of doing chains? Now, those of you that have been around this channel for a while know that I spent a lot of time building up my bench press when I was a big fatty power lifter. Um, I would use 120 pounds of chains and a slingshot. So I was overloading at the top end, about 505 pounds is what I got to. So I'd use chains and a slingshot. But do I feel if you can't afford, like obviously we can't all afford chains and we can't take chains to our gyms. So do I feel the slingshot is an excellent tool to be, that can be used instead of chains? Absolutely, I believe every lifter should have a slingshot. It doesn't mean you have to use it for every workout, but I do believe that there, when those days when you go into the gym and your shoulders are a little bit off or they just don't feel perfect, I want you to go into the gym, I want you to use that slingshot on those days when like your brocalis is screwed up, or your shoulders are screwed up. Use it as a tool when you have those off days just to give yourself a little support to still get in good rep work. But as an overload tool, yeah, the slingshot is a great tool. It works just like chains. It makes it harder when you lock out. It challenges my lockout by about 40 pounds. So if my lockout is about, let's say 355, I'll be able to lock out about 395 on the slingshot. So yeah, slingshot, I would just go for the base model slingshot. I've had one for six, seven years. That sucker holds up well. I really recommend it. It's from Mark Bell at a website. I believe it's How Much Ya YA Bench. So guys, that's it for this Saturday Q&A. Again, if I featured your question in this Q&A, come on over to my email. Send me an email if you want a copy of either my Massive Iron Book or my base, that's my base building book, or Massive Six, which is my six month beginner program. I will send you a copy of my book, No Questions Asked. Guys, I got a new pre-workout coming out. It's gonna be called Power Builder. This stuff tastes great. 
Um, we've had it in formulation for four months. We we're trying to get the formula right. It's going to be fruit punch. Tastes great. This stuff is going to kick butt, and I, and I, I can't wait to uh, start trying that. I've been using Clash for a while. I'm really excited to have my own product come out and start using my own product. So please look for that soon. If you've made this far in this video, guys, and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate your support. And if you want to connect with the big, hairy, ugly dude on social media, boom, all kinds of links below. Periscope, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Tutor, Tweeter, Twatter, everything. I'm on everything. So please connect with the big, hairy, ugly dude. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.